Hey guys, remember to like and subscribe to this channel as I continue to bring out more content relating to finances and also the Bible. But right now we're going to be in Ruth 3 and I can't wait to finish this this book. Uh, you know how much I love preaching and talking about God and how much he loves people. And um, so finally I got this this uh, OBS to work and hopefully you are watching me. So if you have a Bible, turn to Ruth 3. And, um, cool. Just checking on my phone to make sure that the live stream is going. Hey, Ruth 3 says, Alright, here's how it, here's what it says. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you that may be well with you? Is not Moaz our relative with who young woman you were? See, he is renewing barley tonight at the thrusting floor. So, just to rewind, because it's been a couple of months, I think, weeks, a couple of weeks since I've done this. Ruth and Naomi, they're in a tough situation. The, um, uh, the, you know, the husbands have died, the sons have died, it's just Naomi and Ruth. And the other, um, sister-in-law that night, that Ruth had, she just, like, went off to her people. And now Ruth and Naomi are just, like, together, and they're in a very tough situation. And so pretty much what happens in Ruth 3 is Naomi tells Ruth, Hey, go... To the barley tonight. So go over there to the thrusting floor. Where Boaz is going to be. And pretty much. Go and lay down. With him. And. This is not really. Saying that they're going to have sex together. Um, what Ruth does. Is she goes. She lays down. Next to Boaz. But like not like in. A sexual way she like it's kind of weird how the how this story plays out she like lays down and I guess covers her feet with the blanket of Boaz and Boaz wakes up and is like who's this and um and Ruth explains to her uh to Boaz he's in verse 9 in chapter 3 it says he said who are you and she answered I am Ruth your servant spread your wings over your servant for you are a redeemer so Ruth Naomi they're in a tough situation they find out that Boaz the owner of this field very successful businessman is a redeemer of Naomi what is a redeemer a redeemer is a very close relative maybe it's like a a, a, a brother-in-law or some some kind of close relative that has the responsibility or the privilege of buying back uh, the the debt that someone owes and what we can turn to like Vinny is it's in the law of the Jewish law of the Pentateuch like Vignius 25 47 it talks about this um, this process it talks about it says if a stranger or a sojourner with you becomes rich and your brother besides him becomes poor and sells him to the stranger or the sojourner with you or to a member of the stranger's clan then after he is sold he may be redeemed one of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his cousin may redeem him, or a close relative from the clan may redeem him, or if he grows rich, he may redeem himself. So pretty much what happens is, uh, during the Old Testament in this time period, if you became poor, you could sell yourself to a rich person and then you or somebody 
close to you could buy you back. It's kind of weird. It's like you're selling yourself into slavery. Um, but then in verse 52, it talks about the year of Jubilee. It says, uh, if there remains but a few years until the year of Job Jubilee, Jubilee, he shall calculate and pay for his redemption in proportion to the years of service. And so, um, there's this year of Job Jubilee, Jubilee, and pretty much that year is the year that if you sell yourself into pretty much slavery, um, like if you're in debt, you can sell yourself into slavery, and then like, uh, the year of Jubilee, which I believe is the seventh year, is the year that you can be, um, free from that, um, in bondagement. Now the Bible does not say that slavery is, a, is okay. It doesn't. It doesn't teach that. Um, this is just a thing that was in the law that for some reason God thought, hey, this is a good idea. If people get in debt, they can sell themselves to rich people and and um, and, um, and he put like requirements of how they can get out of that slavery bondagement. What happened in America with slavery was completely different from what we see right here in the Bible. The Bible's type of slavery was like a, um, you can be, you can sell yourself into slavery, you can buy yourself out of slavery, uh, but the kind of slavery we saw in the United States was nothing like what was in the Bible. It, the kind of slavery in the United States was completely against the will of people, and it was a lifetime, and so the two are very very much different this was the kind of slavery that you could put yourself into slavery just to pay off some a heavy debt or something that you owed so that's a little history of the law so Naomi goes tells Ruth hey go lay down with Boaz let him know who you are that he is a redeemer and Boaz Boaz, in his integrity, tells Naomi, or tells Ruth, isn't Naomi such an uh, amazing name? Um, Boaz tells Ruth, hey, yeah, you're right, I am a redeemer, but there's someone that's even closer to you. Uh, yet, there is a redeemer nearer if he will redeem you good. Let him do it. But if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lay down until the morning. So, I just lost my page in the book. Oh, okay, right, there it is. <laughs> Pretty much... This is towards the end of, you know, the barley season has come to an end and Boaz and Ruth get to know each other this whole time and, and, um, but at the end you see this incredible integrity of Boaz that even when he had the opportunity in the middle of the night to sleep with Ruth to, um, and Ruth had the same opportunity to do the same thing to, you know, they, and they chose not to. And that's something that I can say, you know, from a Christian standpoint, that integrity of being just the fact that we're Christian, that we should be walking with God, knowing that God is watching, even when no one else is watching. I mean, Boaz and Ruth, just out in the middle of a field. Something else I want to point out. In the 21st century, a lot of women, they, they want guys to go up to them. But, in this story, Ruth goes up to the guy. Hey, sometimes... Sometimes women have to go up to the guy that they want. Um, I mean, 
might not be socially acceptable, culturally acceptable, but I mean, like, if you really think that that guy that you're thinking about is a good guy that you want to be with for literally the rest of your life, and the guy is just so stupid that he just doesn't see it, or maybe he's just, like, blinded by just the fact that he's, like, trying to run everything around him. I mean, whatever the circumstances, maybe you as a woman should make the first move, just like Ruth right here made the first move and went up to Boaz and said something. Like, Boaz did Boaz, Boaz actually did know who he was. It says right here in verse 12, it says, And now it is true that I am a redeemer. Boaz knew the whole time. Yet, there is a redeemer nearer than I. Like, Boaz knew the whole time that he was a redeemer. He knew the whole time and... And he never made a move. I wonder why. I'm kind of interesting. Um, but Ruth makes the first move. And sometimes maybe you have to make the first move on the guy that you're interested in. Something else is that as Boaz, his integrity, man. As that, you know, you women out there, you want to find, you know, your prince charming. Find a man like this that is willing to honor you for one, right? And honor God, like this is an incredible um, way that Boaz handles this, is that he honors God by honoring the ways of God, right? Because there's a um, step-by-step process that Boaz must take, saying, hey, there's someone else that's nearer, but if they're not going to do it, I will. So Boaz is going to give the opportunity to someone else to buy Back to redeem Ruth in the land. Um, so, and then at the end of the uh, chapter 3, you know, Boaz gives Ruth some barley and says, You should not go back home empty handed. And then Ruth's mother in law gives her some words of encouragement. And so, what can we learn from this? I think that. As we are looking for a spouse, looking for a wife, looking for a husband, looking for, you know, whatever is the next step is in life, we can find um, that we should be more like Boaz and and live in integrity, and um, we should be more like Ruth and have that courage to step out in faith and do something that might not be all the way acceptable to society like Ruth going out to Boaz in the middle of the night and kind of like laying down next to him like I don't know I kind of I wouldn't be freaked out if I'm laying down and like some woman just like walks up to me and is like open you know lays down you know what I mean like some woman comes up to me and lays down next to me will freak me out like, who are you? Like, Boaz freaks out too. So, the courage that Ruth had, the integrity that Boaz had, but it was all built upon the foundation that the Bible has, that the Word of God has. So, with that being said, I hope you, um, you took something from that. And maybe you're just a woman and you're like, man, I can't find a, can't find a husband. Well, Maybe you gotta make that first move. I get messages all the time from women all over the um, different countries. You know, as you know, I got that Christian singles page on Facebook, and I get women all over like Africa and and the UK and sometimes in the United States, but not very often. It's usually outside the United States, Philippines, Africa, the UK. I think that's about it, yeah. They always try and message me and um, try and get me to date them, I guess. But, I mean, I'm more into people that live close by within the borders of my nation. 
Uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not doing no long distance relationship. Um, but or like that, like a when I say long distance relationship, I mean I would date someone in another state with the intentions of like moving away and living with them. Um, as long as they're like following after God, pursuing after God, that their lives are a reflection of Christ. Like, you know, I'm not just going to move for anyone. Um, but women are always, it's always the women outside the United States. I don't know why. Maybe it's a coach war thing. But sometimes you just have to take that first step, that first move that, and uh, see what happens. As a woman... Maybe you as a guy have to make the first step, the first move. I don't know. I do know we should be living our lives according to the word of God. And we should not give up for living for God. With that being said, God bless you. Subscribe. Join my Patreon channel.